Okay, the display we're looking at now is Spectrum Labs and it is um, set up to just about 2 kilohertz audio bandwidth of which my receiver bandwidth as you can see my receiver bandwidth is approximately uh, 1200 hertz so we're going to dial in the frequency until we can hear it and right now we're out of the audio and visual passband I can see the signal just starting to come in so I will quickly get it inside the passband and now what we're aiming for is the uh, I'm stopping the, the tuning right now just to show you where I'm aiming. I'm aiming for this 600 hertz line so we, if we hadn't stopped we could be getting in there real quickly so we'll see where we're at here. I should be able to get within uh, at least a couple of hertz. Okay so let's see how that looks. That look can look pretty good there. Um, you can't believe this number here because that, that goes in steps that are bigger than the resolution of Spectrum Labs. However, we do can read it right off the dial here and that reads 599.404.403 somewhere in that area. So if I do my math on that, I take the dial frequency plus my calibrated CW pitch frequency and the way I get that is I just hook the output of the uh, synthesizer which is based on a GPS DO and dial, dial in the radio's frequency selection to the same as the frequency synthesizers output and then measure the CW pitch frequency. I record that value. So I've got that value here and that that number um, is uh, 600.10292 Hertz when the dial frequency meets the synthesizer frequency. So what I do in my math is I add the 600.10292 to the dial frequency and subtract from that my measured audio frequency. So let me do that real quickly and see what I come out with. Okay, seven point okay, so I come up with seven point one two three four five six point seven zero four hertz so that's seven point one two five four five six seven oh four megahertz now that we have that number we'll quickly stop the video and turn over to the um, frequency synthesizer and see what it is well it's a little dark in here but I had to do that to be able to see the screens uh, correctly on the uh, uh, CRT there so as we can see, the, the synthesizer is putting out 7.1234567.01 hertz. So my calculated frequency was 3, maybe 4 millihertz off of the uh, generated frequency. And anything greater than a millihertz is due to the the noise on the signal and if I had reduced the data instead of just looked at the quick look I'm sure it would have been right in there sub millihertz and uh, the other verification point will follow okay we've swung over we're now looking at the um, remote video from the IC7800 and just to verify that the f dial we've got in is 7.123456 megahertz so um, at least to the um, one hertz resolution, the uh, just by dial alone, we can see that the synthesizer and the radio are at the same frequency. So that is, in a nutshell, the way that I uh, measure on a frequency measurement test, and my results are usually sub 100 millihertz. Um, the last two. On 40 meters, we're sub 50 millihertz, and uh, on 20 meters, the Doppler is huge, and so I'm, I'm lucky to get within 150, 200 millihertz, but there's nothing you can do about Doppler. I think we've learned that. So I hope this helps, and uh, it just shows one of the diff many different ways of measuring a received frequency. K7HIL QRT.